What's going on, y'all? It's Dre, aka Tommy P. I'm here at um, Mill Bank. We just wrapped up a little small introduction with Looks by London. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and ask him a couple more questions. What has kept you motivated in that world of fashion? Uh, what keeps me motivated, honestly, is I've never seen anybody act like me uh, on television, or, you know, I've never had a mentor in my life that was like something that I like looked up to. Mm. So I always wanted to be that for my nieces, for my nephews, for like the up and coming kids growing up. Just cause I've never had like somebody to look up to. When all the adults that I had around me were like doing things that were boring to me. Like, you know, and then they laughed at me when it was when it came to doing creative things. You know, and I don't know if you remember, but my parents too, they were just like, you know, let's go to school, let's do that. Instead of yeah. like, but now that styling is what's paying the bills, it's a whole different conversation now, you know? So I feel like, you know, I, honestly, what keeps me going is that like, honestly to you, you guys, honestly, because I feel like I wanna let you guys know that you can do literally whatever. It's not even just about styling. Whatever's in your head right now, whatever you're thinking literally about right now, you can literally do it. And honestly, the only thing that's stopping you is you. And once you realize that, you can do anything in this world. And I know a lot of people say that, but once I started to realize, like, literally it takes a plan. No, it starts with your thoughts. Once you do your thoughts, it's planning. Once you plan, you have to put that to motion. And that's literally the, the roller coaster effect. If you keep that going, life is pretty much, I'm not going to say easy, but it kind of makes sense as far as when it comes to your career part. You're always going to feel nervous. That thing in your stomach is always going to be there. You're always gonna have a fear to this day. Like I did Fashion Week uh, this year, and again, right before the show, I'm like, this can either go left or this can either go right. And it's like, I've been doing this for how long? So I right. should be knowing that it's gonna be fine regardless. Right. But as an artist, I feel like you still wanna be sensitive and you still wanna have those fears because that keeps you hungry. I feel like once you stop having fears and like a little bit of like anxiety, then it's time to move on. I feel yeah. like you got the project and you can do something else. Speaking on that, like kind of bouncing between roles within the creative field, is this something that you done that you want to revisit or something that you haven't done and kind of think like, damn, I want to give that a try? Um, both. Uh, I started, before anything, I was in acting school. Right. So I want to get back into acting because I stopped acting because I was in my head as, a, as well. Thinking right. like, oh, I can't be a stylist and be an actor. Oh, I can't do one thing and do another thing. And then I realized, no, you can do everything you want to do. So. This year, my main focus is to, you know, push myself as much as I can outside of my comfort zone. Right. Um, and even directing, you know, this was my first, I would say, uh, fashion week that I had literally 100% control. Mm. I've done fashion shows where, you know, there's people in charge and da -da -da -da, they tell me what to do and, you know, I do it. But this was the first year that, like... Creative director. Creative director. And it wasn't just the name. Like, right. I did the job. You know yeah. what I mean? So I feel like I'm doing that, but I feel like, again, it's up to me. It's only going to be up to me. If I want to sit home and be like, no, I can't do this, or, oh, what are they going to think? Yeah, yeah gonna be, head, It's going to be 2024. Right. I definitely want to start a styling um, agency mm -hmm. where, like, I can build up-and-coming stylists. Mm -hmm. I can teach them, you know, even if they're, like, in, still in school. Because I feel like that wasn't open for me when I was right. younger. There wasn't, like, you know, up-and-coming or known stylists that was opening their doors to teach me. So I want to do that for up-and-coming, you know, stylists. Do you have any, like funny stories with working with any artists in particular. Like, you don't have to say a name yeah, if you don't yeah. want to, but yeah. like, any funny situations that happen that you was like, yo, I can't, I can't believe so-and-so did this, said this, or that happened to them. Oh yeah, no, it's a lot of crazy stuff. Of course, I won't mention no names. I'll give you three crazy stories. One story, I was working with a couple um, that was on the Love & Hip Hop show. Um, so you gotta figure that one out. Um, and they, I was dressing them for the scene, but they really had like love relationship problems. Um, and this night got a little left and I'm literally like in their living room as they're like talking regularly. And then two seconds later I turn and she picks up a knife and is like, if you don't get out my house right now. And I'm just like, oh, this is awkward. And he's right. calling me like, London, can you help me? And I'm like, I don't want no knife? parts of this. Right, <laughs> I'm like, it's your fault. Like she found out that she did something wrong. I want no parts of it. So that was one of the craziest um, times. Another one was, I think I have told this story just now, if he was listening while he was here. Uh, one of the rappers, we set up the whole video set. It was amazing, it was a big mansion. You know, everybody's there. He shows up late, forgets his words. Uh, we couldn't shoot the video because, you know, he just didn't know the words of none of the song, like at all. Like, he was just in another world. And the only thing we could do is like, do B-roll of him just choking. Because one, he didn't want to sing his song. 
And that's another thing. He was like, no, I'm good. Like, it was like, so are you not here for a music video or? So he pulled up to the music video and was like, nah, I'm not trying to do the music video. Like once he started and realized he didn't know his words, I think he just flipped and was like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm off this. <laughs> yeah, so it was hilarious. So we had to reshoot the whole video once he was, I guess, in a better mindset. Right, yeah. right. Come on, you say you had three. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, do I want to tell this one? <laughs> um, I mean, I guess. One time, an artist. No, I don't want to tell it. <laughs> Another day. So, what what is one of those um, shattering uh, on a milestone or a goal moments for you? Like one of those moments where you like, yeah, I just transitioned from this to this, like leveling up. Kind of thing. Um, I, it's crazy because as much as I just said, like, you know, you got to get out your own way. I feel like I'm my biggest uh, critic, so sometimes I don't even celebrate the small wins. And that's my goal this year, to make sure I celebrate everyone. Milestones, I think, for me, was two. Was working with Little Niles X and Little Kim. And those two, at those moments, for me, I had to be like, I had to step back and be like, I remember when I was in like high school singing, you know, Little Kim raps and stuff. So the fact that I'm not working with her, it was like one of those full circle moments. Right. And then Little Niles X, for me, it was like, they were doing, um, I think, the Instagram Awards, and I didn't realize that I would be working with him because they didn't tell us nobody was working mm -hmm. that day. It was one of those very like, you don't know because it's big celebrities. Right, like, I don't want you to spill no tea before They could have told me that, like, let me prepare <laughs> myself. But it was really dope to get to work with him and just see how talented and like how professional and like how he's really about his craft. Like it was really dope. And he's one of the biggest artists, so it was, it was pretty cool. So this segment is called Fashion Gems. Do you have any gems you want to drop? I feel like I've been dropping gems the whole interview, but um, if I want to drop some more, um, I would say is find your own tribe. Somebody squash your dreams, because I did that a lot when I was your age. A lot of my friends would like laugh at me and be like, no, that's dumb, you should do this, you should do that. So what I will say is like, whatever you want to do, stick to it. Write it down right now, so when you're my age, you can come back to it and like, okay, maybe I should, you know, try this out now. So like when you find what you love to do, don't tell nobody, just do it. Like, don't tell nobody what you're about to do. Don't tell nobody your plans. Because a lot of people, even your close friends, sometimes are the ones that want to take your ideas and run with So, don't tell nobody. Keep this way to find your style. And this is what I tell people all the time, is to try everything. It's just like when you're trying to get a new, uh, a new uh, palette of, um, is that the right word? Not palette. A new um, taste bud. You want to try something different, you get what I'm saying? So that's what I try to do with my clients in the beginning. Try everything. Stuff that you wouldn't even think you would put on. Go in the stores, try on stuff, have fun. And that's when you would realize, oh, I would have never thought to put this on. Because literally, every client that I've ever worked with, and I'm not even lying to you, I'll put them in something like this. Something even a color they would have never thought. But because we have the options of just, you know, trying stuff on and playing, it's kind of like dress up, as much as you want to not think about it. But it's pretty much playing dress up. Play dress up with yourself, and then you'll know your style, honestly. Like, take a day, go to like your favorite mall, try to mask stuff. You don't gotta buy nothing. Take your phone, your homegirls, record everything, put stuff together, and like, cause, cause that's what these balls are there for. Try All right, Lady, you gotta look in the camera, let the, the people know where they can find you at, what you up to. Again, it's your favorite stylist, looks by London. That's you and an E, not two O's. Um, and, you know, you can find me on all social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, my website, everything is Looks by London. Not two O's, that's a U and an E, okay? Um, and I'm everywhere, styling, directing, you never know what I'm gonna do next. Teaching. So teaching, dropping them gems. Stay tuned, guys. Thank you for bringing me, <laughs> Definitely. All right, that's Fashion Gems with Design to Conquer. Take care. Period.